Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to Venus Pages. Today we're talking about Holy Sonnet 5. I am a little world made cunningly. As usual, let's start with a summary and then move on to the line by line analysis. In the sonnet, we explore the idea of God and man and the duality of it. And this one is much less really about God and the general theme of good and evil. And it marvels at how humans are, at how our existence is so complex, how we contain such multitudes inside us, how there's almost a little world. And it really doesn't get onto God as, until the last line. So it's a much more subtle holy poem than some of the others that we will see here. And there's a conceit of the furnace and the water and the body as a world, the microcosm. So we have two quatrains and a sus set. It's the structure that's already familiar to you from our, us talking about John Donne's holy sonnets. So without much further ado, let's just get straight into the line-by-line -line analysis. I am a little world made cunningly, of elements and an angelic sprite. But black sin has betrayed to endless night my world's both parts, and oh, both parts must die. I am a little world. My body is the world. It's that idea of the microcosm which we actually talked about in the very first poem in the series, The Good Morrow, that idea that we all, well, there it was that lovers make a world in their room, a mini world, but just in their room because their love is so big that it can almost spark new creations and new universes. Here, it's a different conceit. It moves away from that idea of love into something more religious and into something more deeply intimate and more deeply personal as Dan ages and moves closer towards the end of his life. So here that idea is just about the person, the individual. It's a dualism between the body and the soul because inside us there's a soul and inside that soul there is a whole range of like ideas, feelings, expressions. So it again creates a new world, a new feeling. It's a change from Dan's romantic poems for sure, but the conceits stay of elements, water, fire, earth, air, and an angelic sprite. So an angelic sprite is like a gift by God. It's an angel on the inside, but I am ruining this gift. Black sin has betrayed to endless night. I need salvation because black sin, my corruption, is betraying me. It's leading me astray. It's making it difficult for those elements, but most of all, it's making it difficult for that angelic sprite. The angelic sprite, it's almost like an implant like a mini god inside our world inside our human world so black sin is threatening to eat me out from inside out and my black sin has betrayed to endless night so black of course is has this imagery of corruption of decay of the colors of evil so it's again that fight of good versus evil as a major theme throughout this poem and it has betrayed to endless night so it's betraying the lightness of this angelic sprite and it's giving me away to darkness it's giving my body away because my body is doing again it's like my body is doing different things my body's pulling me down to hell as we have seen in the first holy sonnet how my body is kind of pulling me towards corruption towards lust and it's my soul who's trying to ascend because my soul is like that gift from god that angelic sprite so it's betraying me it's a reference to the original sin judas betrayed christ or like eve betrayed god by trusting the serpent so I am betraying the gift of God by behaving in a sinful way. It's leading me to a never-ending darkness, a world far away from light. My world is both parts, and oh, both parts must die. So one part is the light of God, and quite literally the daylight, and the other part is the darkness of the devil and the night. But oh, both parts must die. So it implies that even the light part needs to die because he wants to be completely made anew within this poem. His body and his soul is inextricable. So you can't have just the darkness die. No, both parts must die, both the darkness and the lightness. So both his body and his soul must die if he wants to be made anew. And must, the use of the motto, it's imperative that both parts must die. And both parts is repeated here. We see like, my world's both parts, and oh, both parts must die. It's a chiasmus. The repetition of both parts, it's separated, and it's almost like his sinful and not sinful side are separated. So he's, it's almost like he has to take this breath to say, to bridge that gap between the sin and the light, to really acknowledge to himself that yes, there's darkness, but yes, there's also lightness, and to take that breath before making that transition. And because the sentence is split, just like he split by evil, we really have this emphasis on both parts to highlight the split, to highlight the separation. You which beyond that heaven, which was most high, have found new spheres and of new lands can write. Pour new seas in mine eyes, that so I might drown my world with my weeping earnestly, or wash it, if it must be drowned no more. You 
in this first line, you which beyond that heaven which most most high, it's a chokey here. So again, that iambic pentameter rhythm of a sonnet of a love poem dedicated to God is broken down by a chokey. So the emphasis is on you. And it's funny here because it's ambiguous who the you is. Likely, it could be God because you is like less personal than thou so it's like you to highlight the distance between him and god that we're quite far because i'm separated by the evil that's corrupting my body but likely you is also a general addressed because god is actually addressed as thee as the more intimate form as no actually i, I am close to god so you is probably people scientists researchers people of the re renaissance people of the intelligentsia so people who found new planets and have found new spheres because again we talked about that Ptolemaic um, concept of the universe before. The whole universe is governed by celestial bodies and like their movements around each other. People discovered new ideas of the world, so have found new spheres. Those people, those very same people who have like found new planets, who have found new elements of heaven, who have found of new lands, who can write of new countries because it's a period of exploration. You clever people, or new seas in mine eyes. So draw, find those new worlds, find those new seas, but just so that you can pour water into mine eyes. He instructs them, he orders them to discover so much water, so many oceans, that it drowns him so that he starts crying, so that he may drown his world, so that he may be made anew, so that he can like wash it out completely and start anew. It's again that idea that like, no, both parts of me must die, so what I want you to do is I want all these top researchers of my time to find new seas just so I can like wash myself anew. It links back to that idea of christening of baptizing of the story of Noah's Ark, of like a great flood that is going to clear the planet and start anew. He wants that to be done to his body and his soul. Or wash it if it must be drowned no more. So if I can't drown my world, then at least wash it. At least try and like do your best to use your discoveries to aid us towards religious discovery, to help me make my soul if not completely anew, but at least to help it move towards cleanliness, help us become closer to God. But oh, it must be burned. Alas, the fire of lust and envy burnt it heretofore, and made it fouler, let their flames retire, and burn me, O Lord, with a fiery zeal of thee and thy house, which doth an eating heal. But oh, the conjunction, drawing attention to this, must be burned, to the Put down this let down this it's a real pause because alas it's for shame because he's saying that no actually water won't work it the fire of lust and envy have burnt it heretofore my passion my lust my envy all those sins have like burned me through they're the cause of this blackness that blackness is not just decay it's it's well that feeling of being burned, of like a dangerous fire, leaving me scarred, leaving me black, leaving me dark, leaving me charred, leaving me evil. So it won't work to just wash away the black parts. Because I was passionate, because I was naughty in the past, I need to be burned anew. Like that fire that forged me. It's like fight fire with fire. I need to burn again. I made it fouler. I made this world, I made my body fouler by engaging in all of these terrible activities that I was not supposed to engage in. And so to have those flames of passion retire, to let them re let their flames retire, so to, to let me be made anew, please burn me, Lord, with a fiery seal. Burn me, O Lord. It's an imperative. Please, Lord, have mercy on me. Burn me so that I may be made anew with your own fiery passion, fiery zeal. It's of you, of you and your house, of thee and thy house. So it's you and your kind of forces, your emotions, your feelings. Instead of it being like the past where I was burned by my own feelings and wants and desires, please burn me with yours because I know that yours can be the purifying flame to make me anew, to match the flames and passion of my earlier life, which does an eating heal. You burning me will 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 he will eat me up, yes, and it will heal me because I will be made anew. So all the bad, all the good will be washed away and I will be made anew. It really is I am a little world and a world that he is asking God to remake completely as he moves towards wanting to repent, wanting to cut those cut cut loose ends basically and to tie things up neatly. So I hope that you found this poem interesting. Thank you so much for watching and for making it this far. And I will see you next week.